Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to show you the old Indian defense, which is a very interesting defensive idea against d4 openings. Mainly played against d4 and c4, but I'm going to show you what to do if white uh, doesn't play c4 as well. Uh, that's going to be the last part of this video. Now, the old Indian defense is what you can see on the screen. This is the main line, and what's this defense all about? Well, uh, if you're familiar with the King's Indian defense, the Old Indian is closely rel related because they have a very similar pawn structure in the center, in a sense that black allows white to gain this huge center with e4, d4, and c4, and then black strikes at the center with e5, trying to create weaknesses, later on going for very similar pawn breaks. Uh, that we have in the King's Indian defense with c6 undermining the d5 square or f5 undermining the e4 square. The main difference between the King's Indian and the Old Indian is the placement of this bishop. What makes this defense the Old Indian uh, is the fact that the bishop is developed to e7. In the King's Indian, the bishop fianchettos to, to g7 and Thus is limited in scope at the beginning of the game, but if the center should open, if black successfully plays f5 and breaks through the center, then the bishop on g7 can be a monster. Which is why most people don't consider the old Indian to be as active, as counter-attacking, as ambitious as the king's Indian. But as I'm going to show you, I, I don't think that's true. Uh, the bishop on e7 has many upsides. Uh, firstly, it's not a bad piece at the beginning of the game, but it can also aid Black's uh, kingside attack later on, as I'm going to show you. Now, we are going to be looking at uh, several different things. In the old Indian, you can see them listed uh, on the screen. You can also switch through chapters. I've divided the video into chapters for easier navigation. We're going to look at... Uh, several different ideas for black so four different ideas for black the main line the ukrainian variation the czech variation and the janowski variation and i'm going to show you what white can do against all of them now we're going to we're going to be focusing on the main line for black simply because it's it's the best and it's basically the old indian defense everything else deviates from the normal ideas and i'm going to show you the setups white can play against it Okay, now let's let's start. So when white plays pawn to d4, black responds with knight f6 and on c4 black plays d6. Now this still keeps things extremely flexible and black can still play the king's indian, black can still play, well, a ton of different stuff, a Benoni uh, and, and so on. One thing I should note is that the old Indian defense is very similar to the Philidor or to the Black Lion. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So white plays knight c3, for example, knight bd7, preparing e5. White continues e4 and we go e5. This is sort of our starting position. If we start with e4 for white and black plays e5, we can basically reach the same position with the difference that white doesn't have to play c4. So black is going to do the same thing. Knight f6, d6, knight b to d7 will be the Philidor or the black lion. So if you play the Philidor on the, or the black lion against e4, this is going to be a, an identical setup. It will just, the, the opening, the name of the opening will, will vary depending on what white does. Okay, so c4, d6, knight c3, knight b7 e5 e4 e5 now this is our main line and white has several options from this position i would just like to note that many transpositions are possible if white for example for example starts with knight f3 black doesn't have to go into the old indian that's why the opening is flexible black can continue with knight bd7 transposing into the main line but black can also play g6, transposing into the king's Indian defense. Black can play bishop to g4, which is the Tartakower Indian. There are, there are many options. Even after knight c3, those things are possible. If knight c3, g6, you're in the king's Indian, and so on. Now, I'm going to show you the options for black first. And then we're going to have a look at all of them 
uh, in detail. So from this position, uh, there are several different moves for uh, for black. If white starts with knight c3, you have the Ukrainian variation at your disposal, and that's the immediate e5. Now, I'm going to show you the variation in detail, but briefly, the idea for black is striking at the center straight away and inviting a queenless send game after pawn takes, pawn takes, queen takes, king takes. And as is the case with many e4, e5, uh, d4, e5 uh, openings, this endgame is usually slightly better for black. The engine says equal in most variations, but I, I think black always has a slightly more comfortable position because of the pawn on c4, whereas black can go c6, preventing this knight from, from coming into d5 and b5. If not e5, black can uh, continue bishop to f5, which is the Anovsky variation. I'm going to show you that in detail as well. The idea behind this is simply to prevent white from expanding with e4. So I think it's a very, very reasonable system. And then we have the check variation, which is pawn to c6, which is the most flexible move, again, allowing you to uh, go into the main line if you want, but you can also delay playing e5 and avoid playing it completely. The idea is usually to develop the bishop to g4 or f5 before you develop the knight. So those are the options for black. As I said, the most common is the main line. So you can go knight bd7, you can go e5 into the Ukrainian, you can go bishop to f5 or you can go c6. Now, what are white options against this main line? Well, white will usually continue e4 and that's white's main option and this is going to be our main battleground but white can also avoid playing e4 and white can play uh, different samish setups which i'm going to show you white can play fianchetto setups which i'm going to show you and white can also play without e4 playing bishop g5 and e3 so those are going to be the things we look at today before we get into that uh, before we look at each uh, variation in detail let's have a look at the pawn structure and piece placement in the old indian defense now this is something you should learn we need to learn the teams and the patterns before we start learning the theory because doing it the other way around wouldn't make much sense now this you could say is black setup in the main line uh, old Indian defense and you're going to try to achieve this whatever white does now let's have a look at uh, what what black did here well after our knight bd7 and e5 and bishop e7 and castles king side what we do is we start preparing our central pawn breaks the first pawn break is c6 now it's a pawn break if there's a pawn on d5 if there is no pawn on d5 yet it's still a useful move now what this does it undermines the center so if the pawn is on d5 it already starts breaking up white center if there is no pawn on d5 then it sort of prevents the, the white from releasing the tension with by playing d5 the pawn on c6 very importantly prevents the c3 knight from coming into d5 and b5 and those could be very annoying it also prevents uh, it also prepares black to play b5 and b5 is going to be one of the main expansion ideas for black and usually black is going to be playing for b5 trying to fianchetto the light squared uh, the light squared bishop on b7 and then later on once this pawn disappears uh the bishop is going to be open one thing therefore we have to remember if there's a black pawn on b5 and white plays c takes b5 it may be counterintuitive but we take away from the center opening our bishop up and the resulting pawn structure is very similar to the spanish in fact and if you've ever played the Spanish or the Ruy Lopez, you're going to recognize the similarities between the two structures. Okay, the difference is white has already traded off the c-pawn. Okay, another thing we need to remember is 
pressure on the on the e4 pawn so usually white is going to have pawns on e4 d4 and c4 one general rule you have to remember is that if you play rook e8 which is going to be a move you usually do play for pressure on e4 then exchanging on d4 is usually a good idea why well you have a knight on f6 putting pressure on e4 this bishop can potentially target e4 and your rook on e8 of course is going to target e4 so by playing rook e8 and e takes d4 you're putting tremendous pressure on the pawn on e4 this is going to be a very very common theme for black uh, when it comes to releasing the central tension i think that it's best to go for rook e8 and e takes d if white plays bishop e3 because that way you gain a tempo and you sort of force matters okay another thing related to rook e8 uh, usually usually it's white it, it, white should aim to close the position down with d5 so white's pawns are on e4 d4 and c4 white should aim to close the position down with d5 only after rook e8 has been played so avoiding these themes of e takes d4 with pressure on e4 there's another reason though if you go rook e8 and white plays d5 now your main pawn break is the king's indian type of pawn break with f5 and of course by playing rook e8 you've simply weakened uh, the f5 pawn break because the rook doesn't support it conversely if white should play d5 before you play rook e8 then that means as is often the case when one side closes the center it makes it easier for the for the other side to break on the side of the board in this case the king side so if white should play d5 before rook e8 is played then f5 is definitely a favorable pawn break for black <clears throat> and that's the case in the king's indian okay now let's have a look at uh the difference between the two bishops so if we put this bishop on g7 we would have a normal king's indian defense type of game and i'm going to show you uh how this bishop is actually de deployed in the king's indian now this isn't the old indian i'm trying to show you the ideas and i'm trying to make you understand the difference between having a bishop on e7 and having a bishop on g7 and i'll try to prove that the bishop on e7 is actually a very useful piece so this is the main main line classical king's indian defense and in this position black plays knight to e7 white goes knight e1 or there are other moves but i'm just showing you the main line of the classical so knight d7 knight d3 and f5 okay so d5 has been played f5 is our main pawn break now in the king's indian defense uh this bishop is on g7 and if you've ever ever played the king's indian or played against it then you'll know that this bishop is a bad piece unless something extraordinary happens unless you can open up this diagonal or if you transfer the bishop to look this way so when black starts the king side attack for example bishop to d2 knight f6 f3 f4 again this is the main line black would like to play g5 knight g6 and then transfer the pieces to the king side break open the white king and checkmate white so white plays on the queen side of course this is white's main pawn break black's play black plays on the king side rook c1 knight g6 c takes c takes knight b5 rook f7 preventing knight c7 queen c2 knight e8 again preventing knight c7 a4 white continues on the queen side h5 black continues on the king side white starts to defend and now black's main move is actually bishop to f8 now wouldn't it be reasonable to already have the bishop supporting this king side attack well that means that our e7 bishop in the old indian is already better placed than the bishop on g7 in the king's indian if the center closes down if d5 is ever played then i think the e7 old indian bishop is favorably placed 
you could have the same exact position. It's just your, your bishop is already well placed, and you can spend the move on something like a6, preventing knight b5. So, in the old Indian, you have same type types of king Indian attacking ideas with f5, which work after the center has been closed down. So let's go back for a moment. So what are black's main ideas? The first idea is this weird move pawn to c6. And it's a multi-purpose move which for the moment supports d5 and b5. It prepares the b5 pawn break. Very importantly, if d5 is ever played, it's black has a choice of opening up the c file or not. If the situation is favorable, you could play c takes d5 and then use the use the c file for your rook. One more pawn break, which I should mention, which I haven't mentioned yet, is d5. Now, d5 is usually a very committal move, and if white has pawns on e4, d4, c4, then d5 is going to create complete chaos on the board. There are some positions in which d5 works, and you should keep an eye out for d5. I'll try to show you one situation where it works, and it could be applicable to similar positions. Okay, and finally, if the center closes down, then f5. Okay, so what black does is c6, a6, b5, and then basically wait for white to commit in some way, because white cannot wait forever. Either white releases the central tension or doesn't. Okay, now let's start looking at actual theory. Let's have a look at the main line. Okay, so d4, knight f6, c4, d6, knight c3, knight bd7. As I said, we're also going to be looking at the Ukrainian variation with the immediate e5. Okay, e4, e5, and knight to f3. Now, we start uh, developing sensibly on the king side first. So bishop e7, white goes bishop e2, and we castle. Okay, black castles, and we go c6. Again, this gives us options either to... Well, we're supporting these two squares, we're preparing b5, and we are ready to open up the c file if we wish to open up the c file. One thing you should never be afraid of is if white releases the tension with d takes e5. Why is that? Well, it's actually very favorable for black to for this trade to happen because the white knight cannot come into d5 and b5 and these two squares cannot be defended as easily, especially the d4 square because the c-pawn and the e-pawn have moved. So this is considered to be slightly better for black. And if we look at a position like queen c7, knight c5, knight e6, trying to occupy the d4 square, it could already be slightly uncomfortable. So white, if white is a good player, isn't going to do that. Okay, white continues development, rook e1. There are alternatives. White could play moves like bishop g5 or bishop e3. If you remember, I told you that against bishop e3, I like playing rook e8 and taking with bishop f8, simply trying to put pressure on e4, but I still have to prepare it first with a6 and b5. So a6, preparing b5. One thing I should mention is that a4 is almost never uh, a good move for, for white, trying to prevent b5. Firstly, because b5 cannot, in many positions, be played anyway, but more importantly, because it gives up the b4 square, and if this tension is released, it's very hard to control c5. If a4, therefore, our answer is immediately a5, and we just switch strategies to fighting for these two squares. Okay, so white goes bishop f1, supporting the pawn on e4, we go b5, and white usually plays pawn to a3, uh, preventing a further advance, so a3 and now bishop to b7. This is the starting position of the main line and this is the position we've been discussing. Uh, there are several ideas for white. Uh, usually white plays pawn to h3 or bishop to g5, either developing a piece or preparing or preventing knight g5. Knight g4 jumps with, with, a, with an f5 expansion. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, let's let's have a look at bishop g5. This is just the most interesting, I think. Uh, we continue h6, and now uh, usually white doesn't give up the bishop. Although giving up the bishop is possible, uh, it's it's. I wouldn't say it's good for white, but it's possible. So bishop h4, and now rook e8. Okay, this is one of the ideas. Uh, now, if you listened closely so far. I told you that d5 should be played, or it's better to play d5 after rook e8 because f5 isn't such a strong pawn break anymore. So that's definitely an option for white. <clears throat> We're going to have a look at uh, an alternative for black instead of rook e8. Now white can simply continue rook c1 and just continue development, but if d5 is played, this is the first part where you actually have to calculate stuff. And I would advise you to remember the rule that if CB, you play CB, if, D, if D5, you play CD5. That's usually a good general rule to remember. So if D5, C takes D5. Knight takes D5 isn't really that good, so most people are just going to recapture with a pawn. Uh, so C takes D5. And now, if D5 in this particular position, you can exploit the fact that the bishop is double attacked so that's something you're going to have a, have to keep an eye out for so in this position knight takes d5 actually does work of course knight takes d5 here would have actually failed to knight takes d5 not even sacrificing a piece and you, white loses a piece basically so knight takes d5 still using this tactical opportunity knight takes bishop h4 knight h4 bishop d5 queen d5 queen h4 queen d6 knight f6 this is a completely equal position so in most cases if black plays correctly and white plays d5 prematurely is going to lead to complete equality which of course doesn't mean that black is winning the game it means that black has equalized which considering that this is a defense we should be happy with so most people are not going to push d5 mindlessly if there are these types of ideas uh, in the position especially after the bishop has been developed again if the bishop had gone to e3 then rook e8 e takes d4 is way more powerful now if you don't want to do stuff like this if you don't even want to allow d5 going into an equal position then i like the idea of knight h7 and knight h7 of course does offer a trade of bishop so bishop e7 queen e7 and again allows d5 but now after c takes c takes we have this idea of knight g5 and knight g5 could be very interesting uh trying to get rid of one of the main defenders and then later on trying to play for uh for f5 now in my opinion uh this is very similar to the Sveshnikov in a way after you get white to recapture on d5 with a pawn uh, so f5 definitely comes as a natural pawn break so f5 you would like to weaken the center you have the c file you can use you have the the c4 square you can use if white isn't careful especially if white plays something like b4 so i think this is a good way to to fight in the main line again remember that in the main line you have a few stages of your setup castle first c6 a6 b5 f5 if d5 has been played if bishop e3 has been played rook e8 e takes d and pressure on the e4 pawn okay let's move on <clears throat> we are moving on to sameish setups for white this is going to be uh, a big part of uh, of what you have to know because most people simply dislike playing against uh, the old Indian defense because black is very solid. One thing I should mention once more, there isn't much theory black has to know and there are no wild gambit ideas for white to punish this defense. Of course, if, if black plays the king's Indian defense, there are many attacking ideas for white. Against the old Indian, not so much. Okay. So the same-ish or f3 setups are a good way for for white to try and complicate things. So knight c3, knight bd7, e4, e5, and knight g2. If white plays knight g2, you know that white is going for the same-ish. 
Okay, we try to do the same thing, c6, and white plays f3. Now, what's the idea behind uh, pawn to f3? Well, the pawn on f3 firstly supports uh, the e4 pawn, so there will never be pressure on e4. More importantly, though, f3 is the beginning of a kingside attack. Now, in many <clears throat> English attack, Yugoslav attack, uh, Sicilian type of positions uh, and in many kings Indian positions with, with the same sort of setup or Grunfeld setups with f3 white is very quick to start an attack with g4, with an eventual g4 so I'm going to show you how to fight this and also if you play this against uh, the old Indian I'm going to show you the only way for black to fight uh, if black doesn't play what I'm about to show you, black is always worse. The engine says more than plus one for white. Also, from a human perspective, what I'm about to show you is very simple to learn. Okay, so first things first, black needs to develop the bishop and castle. Bishop e3, very standard, uh, similar to white's attacks against the Sicilian defense. White wants to go queen d2, castle queen side, and then g4, h4, blah, 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 blah. blah. Okay, we castle. And in order to start uh, a successful attack, white really should close the center down. You could say that this is the starting position, but many people have made mistakes here as white. So we're going to look at d5 as the main and only good move for white, because it gives white a freer hand on the king side. But I'm also going to show you a very thematic mistake, which has been played 41 times in Master Games, in Grandmaster Games. So it must have been played a ton of times online and by weaker players. And that mistake is queen to d2. Now, if we compared this to the Samish King's Indian, there is one important thing we have to notice. This bishop has been developed in one move. In the King's Indian, black plays g6, bishop g7. Now that tempo used to play g6 has been used to play knight bd7 in the old Indian. So instead of having an advanced pawn on g6 and the bishop on g7, we have both these minor pieces developed. So we are actually in a perfect position to punish this setup for white. Most people who play the same ish against the King's Indian are going to make the same mistake of playing Queen to d2, but it simply doesn't work here. Here is why. We can strike at the center straight away. Notice how this knight is defending the e5 pawn? Well, d5. And black is more than equal. If you turn on the engine, the engine says minus 0 0.3. So if you can be slightly better on move 8 with black, with an opening considered to be passive, then that's great. Okay, so let's look at white's options. Uh, well, you can go ed5 or cd5. Uh, there isn't really much you can do. One thing I would like you to remember is that you normally don't really want to take on e4 as black uh, because that gets rid of this structural weakness of g2 f3, which is preventing white from developing normally. Okay, so let's look at e takes d5 first. If e takes d5, c takes d5. Now, white can play knight takes or pawn takes. It's going to lead to similar positions. I think c takes is white's best choice. And now, the important move we have to insert is e takes d4. Now, this has to be taken. Doesn't matter how white takes it. Uh, I think the only bad, really bad move would be queen takes because of bishop c5 tempi later on. Uh, let's say bishop takes, I think that's best, and now simply knight b6. And if we look at this position, it's six pawns each. Black's king is perfectly safe. You're going to pick up the pawn on d5. There is no way for, for white to keep defending it, at least not successfully. And even if white does, you're going to play rook e8 and rook c8 and just storm over white's position. So if queen d2, d5 is very, very strong. The engine says black is slightly better, but if we end up in a position where white has a pawn on f3 and the king on e1, then it's more than that from a human perspective, in my opinion. Now, if c takes, 
then c takes knight takes knight takes e takes again we insert e takes d4 again bishop d4 knight d4 let's say bishop d4 and again knight b6 and if white tries to defend the pawn once then, then we're just going to take it if white doesn't defend then then we just take the pawn anyway and now of course it, it's not a winning advantage but it's not clear where the white king is going to go if you cancel queen side as white i'm very quick to play bishop f5 and rook c8 also you have to watch out for bishop g5 if you cancel queen side now then bishop g5 just wins the game and if you're going to be castling king side, for example, bishop d3, then you have to watch out for your bishop on d4 being loose. If you play bishop e2, that's a very passive bishop. You have a pawn on f3. Ideally, white would like to have this pawn on f2, this bishop on e2, this knight on f3, and, and the king on g1. So it's simply not a good setup. Okay, so in the same ish, if they go queen d2, punish that with d5. You have to you have to know this pattern. If they play queen d2, you are prepared to play d5 because you have a knight on d7. Okay. Alternatively, white can play a good move. White can play d5. Now, once the center has been closed, uh, white is prepared to play queen d2, to castle queen side, and to start an attack. Now we want to make this as hard as possible for white to do. So what we do first is we open up the c file okay c takes that's the best move and in this position believe it or not there are two popular moves knight e8 and knight h5 and they are both pretty bad white scores excellently and should have a more than plus one advantage i'm going to show you a move that makes a ton of sense <coughs> and simply prevents what white is trying to do now let's have a look at the main line so-called the the most often played move people usually play knight e8 let me show you why that's bad after queen d2 knight c5 g4 this isn't easy to defend it really isn't easy to defend white is going to castle queen side and then just start pushing the pawns or if not knight e8 but knight h5 which is the second most popular Again, queen d2, something like knight b6, opening up the bishop, and b3, preventing the knight from coming into c4. Again, th this is coming. You can play f5, but g4 is coming. The engine says more than plus one. So both of these weird knight moves, trying to free up the f5 pawn, don't really work, because the king isn't going to be anywhere near f1 soon. So, this move that I'm about to show you has only been played once in master games but it's actually the best move and it allows black to keep something close to equality h5 okay so what's the idea behind h5 there are two ideas the first one is preventing g4 by brute force and if we can playing h4 uh locking down the king side pawn structure and forcing white to either give up a pawn or, or never move this knight the second idea is we would like to exchange stuff along this very very strong diagonal for white so white continues queen d2 and we go knight h7 now you can see how important it is uh, to have the square for our knight supporting the bishop and the knight cannot be harassed now white has several ideas there is really no theory here anymore uh, usually i think white is going to play something like knight g3 Okay, attacking the pawn. Now you don't want to overextend if you don't have to, and you don't want to give up the f5 square, so just defend. g6 is a perfectly reasonable move. And after white tries to develop, then we can continue with h4, and then eventually bishop to g5. h4 in this position, for example, simply prevents kingside castling. So I think this is very strong. If instead of bishop e2, white castles queenside, then we can immediately start exchanging pieces. Or we can try to develop our queenside and get something to c1. In any case, white hasn't started the attack. White has nothing. Okay. So that's what you do against the same issue. Now let's move on to our next setup. I'm going to show you what happens... Uh, against Fianchetto setups for, for white.
Okay, so same position, e5, knight f3, knight bd7, and white plays for g3. Now, white is usually going to play e4 anyway, so this is going to be very similar to white playing the fianchetto against the king's indian. In my opinion, though, this is the only variation where having the bishop on e7 is not favorable. So I think this is actually... It would actually be a bad idea to go for the old Indian in this case. If I were black here, I would go into the king's Indian defense with g6. I'm going to try and explain why, but bear in mind that playing the old Indian against Fianchetto setups really isn't easy. Why is that? Well, with the center being looser than usual because white usually doesn't close things down with d5 blocking in this bishop the bishop on g7 often, ha often has a brighter future in the king's indian than it normally does so i would prefer to play the king's indian here that's just my opinion bishop e7 is still perfectly playable so i'm going to show you the old indian against fianchetto setups so bishop g2 castles castles okay black plays c6 in this case, actually blunting the bishop, and white plays pawn to e4. Now you can see that having the bishop on g7 would definitely give it more scope. The bishop on, 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 on e7 isn't really that good, especially since against Fianchetto setups, f5 doesn't work as well. Black usually doesn't go for f5 in the king's indian against the Fianchetto. Alternatively, white doesn't have to play... Uh, e4 at all white can play queen to c2 and then maybe play e4 later white can start with rook d1 and trying to put pressure over here in both cases i think white is better and the engine says white is better so again very risky to do this with black let's look at e4 though a6 we go for our normal stuff and with this bishop on g2 white actually has a choice here white can allow b5 and this bishop to come to b7 but i think that here it's playing a4 is actually justified and remember what i said at the start of the video when your opponent plays a4 you need to switch your focus to these two squares so you play a5 and obviously white has better pieces more space and so on but at least this way you have some weak squares you can fight for okay h3 is usually played stopping any knight g4 ideas maybe preparing g4 in the future and there have been games with knight e2 knight g3 knight f5 uh rook e8 trying to put pressure on e4 bishop e3 and now this is what we normally do we try to put pressure on e4 in this case since a4 has been played instead of a3 we actually have the c5 square for our knight, so it's even more favorable. I think this is the easiest way for black to play. When bishop e3 has been played and you have a rook on e8, then you take. Knight takes and knight c5, and you simply want to go bishop f8 and try to put enough pressure on e4 to at least force a concession from white. Now, black is always going to be slightly worse here. Again, the engine says, let me see. 1.4 so that's according to the engine a huge advantage but the engine doesn't i think the engine overestimates space give me a second i need to open the door for my dog she is clawing at the door i don't know what's up just a second Hi, peachy. sorry about that i couldn't concentrate she wanted to go out to the balcony uh, yeah, so against Fianchetto setups, again, my opinion, go for the King's Indian. If you do go for the Old Indian, then this is the best you can get. Remember to play a5 if they go a4. If they don't go a4, then you play your usual stuff, Fianchetto, the bishop, and parry uh, this one. Okay, now let us move on to main lines where white avoids playing e4 so we're gonna have a look at bishop g5 and e3 systems for white so again d4 knight f6 c4 d6 knight c3 knight bd7 knight f3 again white could go knight f3 first 
preventing the Ukrainian variation, which I'm going to show you in a bit. But if if e5 isn't played after knight c3, then it transposes. Okay, e5. And now usually we've been looking at uh, e4, but let's have a look at bishop g5 now. Now, now bishop g5 is an extremely flexible move. Uh, personally, this is what I play against the old Indian. I now play d4 as my main repertoire and I enjoy this very much and I play bishop g5 against the Grunfeld, I play bishop g5 against the King's Indian, so I just like setups where my pawn on d4 is supported and I haven't committed to e4 d5. There are two reasons for playing this for white. Firstly, black is confused when the, cent when the center is fluid and white doesn't have weaknesses. Secondly, they don't have their usual pawn breaks their normal ideas don't work okay i'm going to teach you what to do with black and i'm going to show you one trick one trap white could go for which you need to know okay so bishop e7 e3 castles standard okay uh, white could play queen c2 or bishop e2 uh, both are fine and they're going to lead to similar positions there is one difference uh, with queen c2 though where by playing queen c2 white could go for a quick attack with bishop d3 so if they play bishop e2 know that they are going to go for kingside castling and the position is going to be calmer if they play queen c2 you're going to be under pressure immediately and that's one of the ideas of bishop g5 that's in fact what i like to do against the old indian this is what i do I go queen c2 here, and when black plays the usual c6, I just go bishop to d3. Okay, and now you can go a6 and b5 and standard stuff. It doesn't work as well, though, because white center is extremely solid, and white hasn't committed the king yet. Uh, but if you try to play what is supposed to be the best move, h6 you need to be aware of one resource and i won a couple of online games with my next move so the bishop could of course retreat uh, bishop h4 is perfectly possible uh, but white does have h4 white hasn't castled yet this rook is active there's problems on h7 and this is a very famous pattern uh, except, as opposed to the Nimtso Indian and the Karo Khan, where the same idea can be seen very often, it's not about winning the piece back. If this bishop is taken, it's actually much worse. Let me show you what happens. My, one of my opponents online actually did take, because he couldn't see how I would win. And here's what happened. H takes, and rook e8 was played, and now not taking the piece back, of course not, but instead of that bishop h7, and if you take that bishop now, then it's checkmate after knight h7, queen h7, king f8, queen h8. Uh, so king f8 is played, and now still not taking the piece, but g6. And this is simply devastating. If you don't do anything, I'm going to take and mate you, so you basically have to take f takes g6, and now knight g5. And that's going to be it. Uh, it's very hard to save the queen and prevent mate. Uh, I don't know what to suggest. I think knight h7 is the best move, just giving up the queen. If you try to save the queen, of course, then I think I start with queen g6 and then it's going to be mate. Uh, I don't play knight e6 first. Now I'm threatening two different checkmates. So on h4, don't take the bishop. You're going to lose. If they do play h4, uh, you just go rook e8, very normal. This bishop can move eventually, but nothing has changed really. The only thing that happened is that white has committed to castling queenside. So, in this case, white castles queenside. Okay, now, if they don't go queen c2, if instead they go bishop e2, then it's going to be calmer. And... Again, I don't play bishop e2 with white, I play queen c2, but I've looked at it, because I wanted an alternative to queen c2. Black should just go for the normal setup with, with uh, an eventual 
expansion if possible. So there's a nice way to prevent that. Since your e-pawn isn't weak, you have a freer hand on the queen side. So you can castle. Knight e8, I think, is the best move for black. Bishop e7, queen e7. And since your center isn't under any pressure at all, d4 is defended, there is no pawn on e4, you have uh, different ideas on the queen side. So you can actually go b4. And as black, you need to follow your pawn chain. In chess, it's about following your pawn, pawn chain and listening to your pawn chain. Where your pawn chain is facing, that's where your pawn break is. So white is playing on the queen side because white's pawn chain is facing towards the queen side. Therefore, white plays b4, black plays f5. And this is now going to be a position in which both sides attack. Okay, so white goes b5. Uh, knight e to f6, getting the pieces towards the queen side, takes, takes, queen a4, and I think the best way to handle this attack is to simply go c5, and <coughs> what white should do is exchange on e5, knight e5, knight e5, and queen e5, and white should be slightly better, because this pawn is slightly weaker than the pawn on c4, but I would definitely say that black has chances and good chances. You can use the e4 square and if that's ever taken, if you get a pawn on e4, that's a big asset in the attack. You have this nice long diagonal. The engine says, let me remind myself, plus 0.6 for white, so nothing major. And again, as black, if white starts attacking on the queen side, you do the same thing on the king side. Okay, so these are white's options in the main line. And now let's have a look at three alternatives for black. Okay, the first alternative I would like to look at is the Ukrainian variation. So d4, knight f6, c4, d6, knight c3. Instead of playing knight b to d7, we go e5 straight away. This of course isn't possible if white plays knight f3 on the third move. So as white, if you would like to avoid the Ukrainian variation, if you find it annoying, just play knight f3. Uh, now, of course, this has consequences. If black wishes to transpose to the king's Indian with g6, you will not be able to play the same-ish, for example. But if you know that your opponent plays the old Indian and you want to avoid the Ukrainian, knight f3. Okay, but knight c3 and e5. Mm. And as is the case often in many Philidor, Black Lion position, even Peart's positions, my coach actually does play d6, e5 whenever he can. Uh, this queenless endgame is going to be slightly better for Black. So takes, takes. Queen takes, king takes. There are several moves for white. Uh, the move that's actually most commonly played should give Black... A an exploitable advantage about minus 0.5 but in practice it's really easy to, to to exploit it and that's bishop g5 there are alternatives and i think knight f3 is simply the best move forcing black to a concession but let's have a look at the biggest reason why this is comfortable for for black well whenever there's a pawn on c4 and especially if there are pawns on e4 and c4 in a queenless endgame then the minor pieces have a lot of room to maneuver and a lot of ideas. You can see that these two squares are much weaker and there are no weak squares in the black position. Black can patch things up with c6, g6, everything is perfectly defended. So, to put it simply, black has more maneuvering ideas and a safer position in this queen Lassand game. Okay, if bishop g5 is played, uh, you should just continue bishop e6 and after castles with check just go knight d7 your idea is going to be king c8 and c6 and king c7 and rook to d8 perfect position knight f3 this pawn is attacked so king c8 unpinning e3 trying to develop the bishop you can just go bishop b4 of course if you can double the pawns then then that would be great alternatively this knight really doesn't have a lot of squares to go to 
Uh, knight e4 is impossible. Knight b5 runs into c6 because the d6 square has been defended. Uh, and yeah, black is just better. There's no other way to put this. So I think white should play knight f3. And you may be tempted to defend with either knight bd7 or knight fd7. These are just the most common moves. But I think the best move is knight c6. Uh, even though you cannot play c6 easily, knight c6 should be, I think, easier to play. Uh, that being said, knight fd7 is the principled move, preparing to play f6, not allowing bishop g5, and preparing to play c6, uh, restricting the knight. So something like g4 is the only way for, for white to try and claim uh, equality or an advantage. I wouldn't recommend knight fd7 precisely because of g4. So for example, c6, b3, f6, g5, you can see that your kingside pawn structure is being broken. So instead of that against knight f3, just go knight c6, the simplest move. If bishop g5, again, bishop e6. If knight d5 here, you have bishop b4 check. And if that's taken, there are problems on c2. So usually white should play knight d2, and now you simply exchange. King takes, bishop d5. If pawn takes, you can just move the knight away. I think this is very pleasant. The knights are actually very good in this position. The engine says 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I would actually prefer having the knights because I think I have more maneuvering ideas. I prefer knights to bishops in positions that aren't completely open. But yeah, if you don't want to have the knight pair against the bishop pair, then play something else. So that's the Ukrainian variation. I mean, of course, white's alternative to taking is just playing knight f3, transposing to the main line, or whatever else, bishop g5, f3, g3. Uh, white doesn't have to take, and white shouldn't take. Okay, now let's have a look at a true alternative for black. Now, this really isn't going to be the old Indian defense in the true sense of the word. So we're looking at the same position, either knight c3 or knight f3 on move 3 for white, and black plays the check variation with pawn to c6. Now, the idea behind this is to develop the bishop first, not play e5 very early, and try to confuse white. Uh, I don't think it's as good. The engine always say, says white is better, but there are some interesting ideas uh, here which I'm going to try to show you. So if, if you go knight bd7, you're transposing into the main lines. White is going to go e4, you basically have to go e5. So black should play either bishop f5 or bishop g4. You know me, I like playing the London, so I think bishop f5 is slightly better, but bishop g4 is considered to be the main line. And white continues e4. And now our idea is, of course, to delay e5 if we want to stay in the in the check variation. If you play knight bd7 and something like bishop e2 and e5, you now have a slightly favorable main line uh, because your bishop has been developed. But you have a slightly weaker queenside expansion because you don't have bishop b7 and you don't have pressure on e4 later on. So honestly, don't think this is any good for black. I think if you're going to play the check variation, then just stick to the idea and go e6. And after e6, bishop e2, bishop e7, castles, castles, you have c5 ideas, e5 ideas, and d5 ideas later on, but you're keeping things flexible and hoping for white to do something in the center which you can punish. This isn't as easy to give general rules for, and there are many things you have to learn. In this position, white has several moves, d5, rook e1, bishop e3, queen b3, there are many ideas. But, for example, after d5, what you should usually do is c takes, white is, I think, going to take with a c pawn, and now e takes, e takes, and you have this symmetrical pawn structure where white has a bit more space, but I, I don't think it's a big deal because it's easier to put pressure on this pawn than on this pawn. So again, if, if white does something in the center, then you react to it. And if you don't go bishop g4, if you go bishop f5, 
then why to try to punish it? I think the principal move here is knight to h4. And what you do in the check variation is either bishop g6 or bishop to d7. So you basically gain the tempo. I think bishop d7 is the principal move. White goes e4 and you go e5. And you notice how uh, the queen trade has been prevented. Your knight isn't on d7. So after something like knight f3, you can just repeat with with bishop to g4 and if white wishes to avoid uh, or not repeat excuse me you can just play bishop to g4 transposing to the position we looked at earlier and if something like bishop to e2 then knight b to d7 and again you're in this sort of main line position where the only difference is that your bishop is on g4 and it isn't going to be on b7 <clears throat> so personally i prefer the main lines to the check variation but if you feel like developing the bishop first, go for it. Okay, now uh, we're going to have a look at the Janowski variation. Now this is a famous one and I think it's quite interesting. So d4, knight f6, c4, d6, knight c3, where you don't go knight bd7, you don't go c6, you don't go e5, you play bishop f5. And bishop f5 tries to prevent e4. It's as simple as that. It's very, very similar to London system setups in a sense, because later on you could be playing for d5, and if you can, you usually should, uh, but it, it just prevents e4. So white needs to do something against this. White, of course, can play knight f3 uh, and continue developing normally, but what white usually does is either white plays f3 or g3 because white needs to play uh, e4. And if white tries to play e4 the usual way with f3, which is the main move, I think black has a very pleasant position. So we strike with e5. Again, we're not afraid of the end game, especially with the pawn on f3. Uh, it's, it's a clear waste of tempo. Uh, so e4 by white. And now we don't retreat, we play e takes d4. Queen takes d4 and knight to c6. We gain a tempo on the queen. And for this central space, for this Marozzi bind position, they have, uh, we have a lead in development. Now switch, okay, after queen d2, if we put this pawn on e7, this would be a normal Marozzi bind versus Sicilian. The difference is that we don't have the c file to work with, so that's a downside, but white has all the downsides of the of the Marozzi because of the bad bishop on, on f1 for the moment. And what white should usually do is start the kingside attack, which isn't easy to do here. Okay, bishop e6, we have to save the bishop. The pawn is under pressure. Uh, b3, white doesn't want to block the, the defense with knight e2, which has to be played to develop the knight. So b3 defense. And now g6. Uh, bishop b2, bishop g7. I think this is a pleasant setup. Something like knight g2. This is a problem piece as in all same-ish setups. So what white is usually going to do is either knight g3 or knight d4 trading. White usually castles queen side, but castling king side is also possible. Uh, I think black has no problem equalizing here. The engine says plus 0.4, which really isn't a big deal. Uh, I, I just think it's a pleasant set. Okay, other than f3, white can try to prepare e4 with the bishop fianchetto, of course. So e5, bishop to g2, c6, blunting the bishop, and e4, bishop g4. If white does this, I think that white is slightly better, always. I don't like playing the old Indian setup against fianchetto setups i just think it's favorable for white the engine says plus one 1.3 uh so the engine agrees with me uh after something like like knight g2 i believe white is simply better it's going to depend on what happens in the center but again playing the anovsky variation the way to punish it is white is to is to go for this and this is what i play if they if they go bishop f5 uh, in the old Indian 
One last thing, they don't have to go g3 or f3, they could go knight f3 and something like bishop g5 and, and e3, which I think is pleasant for black and there really isn't much theory there, you just, you just play chess. Okay, now the final thing I want to look at is what if white doesn't play c4? How do we play the old Indian? Well, you don't really play the old Indian uh, after d4, knight f6, knight f3 and d6. If they go c4, we have the old Indian. If they go e4, it has been prevented for now, uh, we will have the Pirts. So if they don't go c4, they're usually either going to go g3 or knight c3. Against g3, you do your same stuff. Uh, I think knight bd7, e5, and bishop e7 castles. And if they go knight c3, trying to transpose to the Pirts, I would advise you to punish their move order by playing bishop f5. If you want a full repertoire in the old Indian, then playing bishop f5 against knight c3 on move 3 I think is a good idea. Uh, now they have options, bishop g5 is possible, but the critical move is knight g4, and uh, sorry, knight h4, trying to get rid of your bishop. In which case, you just go bishop to d7, okay, you've allowed e4, but you can now go e5, and they've wasted the tempo on on knight h4. So the knight retreats and we develop to c6 instead of d7. I think this is very very pleasant for black. I think it's better than uh, retreating the bishop to g6. Of course this is the Philidor basically but if you play the old Indian then you're gonna be comfortable with the Philidor defense. Okay so I don't think there's anything better if they don't go uh, c4 so learn this okay uh, i hope you liked the video uh, you can again find all the chapters it's easy to navigate between uh, the parts of the video i hope and the pgn of all the variations will be available on my patreon feed if you wish to download it and study the old indian yourself thank you for watching i uh, hope you like the video stay tuned for more chess bye bye